In 2015, Brighton Digital Festival was able to commission six new pieces of work that explored the intersection of art, technology and society. Among the selected work was New York artist Jeff Thompson's The White Noise Boutique. The White Noise Boutique is a pop-up shop uh, dedicated to producing the finest quality white noise hand-cut to vinyl records. So we generate white noise using a variety of methods that range from kind of historical electronics from the 1950s all the way through to contemporary cutting-edge cryptographic algorithms. And so in real time, the customer can come in and kind of watch this whole process unfold and they walk out of the shop with a handmade record. So this is noise coming from the generator in real time um, into here. And we can go ahead and turn on here and record. So when someone comes into the shop, we talk through kind of the process. And, uh, you know, again, that social interaction is a really important part. You know, they come in with different kind of interests in how they might use their noise, ranging from audio purposes or an, as an artistic object or for cryptographic purposes. And so that kind of dictates the conversation and the kind of depth to which we go into some of the kind of details. So this is the lathe that cuts the records. It's basically um, like a regular turntable. It's just got some additional parts. It's a turntable base and uh, I'm just affixing the blank. Uh, we want it really flat and um, really still while we're cutting. I'm definitely really interested in art kind of inhabiting spaces that are we don't necessarily see art happen. The shop is both an artwork and a functioning store and I think it's not sort of that the art is stealthily inserted into a working shop. It's kind of completely enmeshed. People from the outside, I see them kind of looking in the window trying to figure out what's going on. Um, in some ways it does look like a, a boutique kind of shop. It's very clean, very minimal, but I think also from the name it's pretty clear that this is not your kind of normal experience. Um, and I'm very upfront that the project is also an artwork, that it's through the festival. But I like that, similar to the conversations about what, what might I use this for, that I get to talk to people and they get to kind of interact with the shop, kind of on a spectrum between shop and artwork, and I think that's really interesting. Um, so I'm going to drop the needle and turn on the audio. There we go. And there we are. Brand new record straight off of the lathe. It's been uh, an incredibly social process, which has been really, really interesting. So um, the planning is all reading and research and building things and logistics and then coming here. Um, it's been pretty much nonstop people coming into the shop. A lot of them are coming specifically to see it, but there's also quite a bit of traffic that they ask, what, what is this thing? <laughs> what do you do here? Um, which is really great. And so I really enjoy kind of those kind of conversations and um, being able to talk with people about the aspects of the project that's interesting to them. So um, conceptual art, cryptography, sound, noise, you know, what would you use these kinds of things for? Um, it's been really kind of fascinating. So I heard about the commissioning program for the Brighton Digital Festival online from um, this amazing site called Rhizome, which actually has supported my work in the past as well. And projects like this really cannot happen without funding and support. Projects are large scale, they, they develop over a really long period of time. And so finding support, which is really rare in the arts, is really critical to making a project like this. It might have been possible to realize this project without support, but it would have taken a lot longer. It would have been completely out of pocket. Um, and the scale of the project would not have been the same as what was possible here. And the kind of support structure too that comes with the commission, the money is certainly helpful, but also um, the help of the staff of the festival and um, all of that was really invaluable to making this possible. And I think along with that too is the professional side, getting a project like this out into the world um, has been, and I think in this case will also be really transformative for my practice. Alongside the White Noise Boutique, the festival commissioned five other works. Familiars by Wes Goatley and Georgina Voss was an immersive audio-visual installation that materialised the unseen logistical infrastructures of planes, trains and ships. 
Alan Donohoe and Steve Parker created The Waiting Wall, a digital version of Jerusalem's Wailing Wall, where people could anonymously post their fears, worries and secrets online. A selection of messages were then seen at Brighton Station. The second part of a proposed trilogy, Finding Fanon 2 by Larry Achimpong and David Blandy, was filmed entirely within the virtual world of Grand Theft Auto V and explored the intersection of race, decolonisation and the post-human. Layla Johnson explored some of the issues around technology and life extension through the darkly comic experience of how to live forever. At the Tigernetic Wellness Centre, James Shreve created a future world where customers were scanned by a mood vendor and placated through medication. Together, these six works created challenging, informative, emotional and human experiences for the audiences. In making the work, the artists were encouraged to push their practice, learn new skills and form new collaborations. Attracting artists from the city, across the country and internationally, these commissions demonstrate the increasing reach and relevance of Brighton Digital Festival. <laughs>